been uh, working with music and technology since I was at university in the late 1960s. So I have seen uh, several generations of technology come and go. And uh, I've seen also an approach to the subject change radically in the last 10, 15, 20 years. Uh, my own work involves traditional musicians, probably uh, more uh, than many composers. I work with them and I use uh, computer and other techniques to change what they play. Live electronics is what we used to call it. Uh, many of my students uh, take the word live rather differently than me. I usually mean that a live musician is a human being playing an instrument of some kind. But uh, recently I've come to understand that live means something rather different now. And I'm fascinated by the change in the meaning of this word, live, over the last uh, 30, 40 years. I think it's very important that uh, we come to terms with this because how we express ourselves as human beings is uh, why I'm a musician and why I enjoy doing it. And I think that it's a fantastic area now is opening up before us in which the idea of live can be extended over a network uh, to involve remote locations which we are not ourselves present at. So what does that mean in terms of embodiment, the way we perceive the world? It's a fascinating area and it's one I'm very interested in exploring. Fantastic. So you, you mentioned uh, a, so a dramatic, dramatic change, if I understood yeah. it right. Maybe you could uh, explain a bit more about that. <laughs> well, I suppose uh, I'll be personal. I've told this anecdote several times. Until the 1990s, I was a sort of grumpy person saying, I'm really fed up with uh, the phrase real time. I don't like it. It's not the same as live. Live is me because I'm here. Live is about me being a human being. And, you know, I still believe that to an extent. I really do. But my students started saying, but what we do is live. And I say, well, no, it isn't. You're sitting at a laptop or a desktop, whatever it is, and just tabbing keys and sound comes out. And it could be the sound of a whole synthesizer orchestra. I don't know. It was huge sound. And I would say, well, that's not live. You're not really producing the sound. And they said, yes, it is live. And this sort of banter went on literally for 10 years, in which I'd say, I don't call what you do live electronics. And they would say, yes, it is. And I'd say, it may be great music. That's not a problem. But uh, it's not live. And I really enjoyed this discussion. I think it was a very rich discussion. But, of course, I've changed my uh, approach to this now. And I do believe that what people do with computers is live. And we're beginning to see that how you imbue something with liveness, how you get the message that you're a real human being across to another real human being, is becoming uh, mediatized. It's becoming part of the world that we live in. But I do think there are very interesting questions about whether you know right now, Andy, that I'm live. I could very well be just a simulacrum of me. I could have sort of created this strange robot me, and you wouldn't really know. Or would you? I don't know. And that's mm. the interesting question. You believe I'm live. I believe you're live. So, you know, it's interesting to find out what are the cues you're sending to me and what are the cues I'm sending to you that say, live human out there, not just another sort of uh, robotic construction. Mm. Because my other theme is I do actually believe in humans humanizing technology, not technology technologizing humans. I think we really can extend ourselves outwards, repossess the space that technology has created for us with our presence and our meaning, if you like, in life. That means then uh, using the technology for, for a way that you find uh, um, more, more human, humanized, humanized. Yes, so, right. yeah. it's exactly that. I don't think that we become more technologized. It's, a, it's what I call a cyber myth. Mm -hmm. that, uh, in a sense, you know, all the cyborg literature is great stuff. It's fascinating. It's about the coalescence of technology and humans. That's fine. But I do actually believe there is something essentially human that we bring to the technology. And what's more, we should bring it. There's an ethical dimension. We should express ourselves and retain that human characteristic, which is um, touchy-feely, if you like. It's to do with how we feel about the world as much as how we think about the world. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Uh, so this, uh, coming back to this, this life element, which I found really fascinating, is that, did that then um, sort of influence your personal creative work as well, or 
Or maybe if not, have, would you have an example to sort of illustrate that? I uh, rather like politicians suddenly wearing baseball hats to get votes. I'm not, uh, and I'm going to be honest with you here, Andy, I'm not changing, I'm not suddenly becoming a great laptop improviser overnight. I like what I do. I'm working right now with a violinist and, and he's playing live and I'm processing his sound using Max MSP. That's what I think I do best. But I have always said I learn from my students um, in every sense. And I would never be a composer unless I also had students, unless I also taught. I love the relationship of, of research to teaching, to composing, to performing. It's a wonderful world we inhabit when the, all of those elements come together. So um, I'm going to leave my students to develop absolutely crazy um, new installation work, crazy new interactive work new post-digital work, I have a colleague who specializes in building instruments, circuit bending, all of that is a very rich world. Who would have predicted circuit bending from uh, toy machines of 20 years ago, making them into musical instruments along with live coding? The future is always something we cannot predict. It's always got wonderful new things in it. I can't say I will join them in their circuit bending, <laughs> but I think it's a very rich area. <laughs>